One day, this man could get cancer. Just like the 18 million people worldwide who are diagnosed with it every year. If there was some way of detecting and treating cancer early enough, many people's lives would be more carefree and safer too. When I was a junior doctor, one experience really got to me. A patient of mine died within just a few months of pancreatic cancer, and there was nothing I could do. I was on the point of giving up medicine for good. But then I decided, no, I want to fight cancer and defeat it. That became my life's mission. Today, Patrizia paterlini Brechot believes she's come a step closer to her goal. The Italian doctor and molecular biologist is convinced that the key to it is hidden inside the blood of every human being. This is because years before cancer spreads visibly in the body, the blood contains clues. Individual cancer cells, known as circulating tumor cells. And, as the cancer gets larger and invasive, it sends more cells into the bloodstream. They can then form metastases in other organs. So, tracing this hidden danger in people's blood could be crucial. Then there might be a chance of detecting invasive cancer early on and of preventing metastases. But the problem is that these cells, these seeds of cancer, are extremely rare. So, how? can they be found? Patalini Brechot had an idea. Circulating tumor cells are in fact quite large. Larger than most other cells in the blood. The tumor cells could be sifted out from the others quite simply, as with a sieve. The blood could be sent through a filter. But at first, that idea seemed quite impossible. Filtering blood is very difficult. Blood differs from one person to the next. It coagulates very quickly and it contains a huge amount of cells. Just 10 milliliters of blood contain 100 million white blood cells and 50 billion red ones. So if you want to find one single cell, it's like searching for one human being among the population of seven Earths. But Patalini Brechot believed she could succeed. She and her team carried out 700 different experiments. They dissolved the majority of the red blood cells and diluted the blood using special substances to prevent it from clotting. This blood treatment made it possible to finally filter it. For the sieve, they used a wafer-thin film, with pores measuring only a few thousandths of a millimetre across. Patalini Brechot also built a device that filters the blood in a controlled manner and successfully patented the technique. She calls it ISET, short for Isolation by Size of Tumor Cells. The partial vacuum with which the blood is sucked through the filter, the quantity of blood in the sample, the number of filter pores, everything in the process had to be precisely coordinated. But how? could the researchers find out under what conditions it would actually work. It was clear to us that, first of all, we had to develop a test that would verify the effectiveness of our technique. To do so, the researchers marked tumor cells with a fluorescent dye. One single tumor cell was then dripped into 10 milliliters of blood. They prepared this blood with the ISET technique and then filtered it. At first, nothing worked. But then the ISET test did indeed detect the one single fluorescent tumor cell. We tried so many methods and didn't find the cell. But one day, we had the right conditions, and we found it. And then, champagne. We took a photo, and it also appeared in the first scientific paper on ISET. Patrizia patalini Brechot wants everyone to be able to take the ISET test in the future. 
as a routine check at the family doctor. You give a blood sample and learn a few days later whether everything is okay or whether action needs to be taken before it's too late. If the circulating tumour cells are isolated, the type of cancer in the body can be established. And soon, the organ in which it's located. With her company Rare Cells Diagnostics and the patents, Patrizia patellini brechot can find investors, partners and sponsors to develop the method further and to carry out clinical trials. The researcher's fight continues. Ultimately, I think it was good that I went into research. That way, I can help many people at the same time. I can improve and lengthen their lives. If I'd remained a doctor, I'd only have been able to help one patient after the other, rather than all of them at once.